So guys, those are kind of the basics, walking through the template. What questions or friction points can you guys identify? My question is, so we're adding now six meals. We're, we're doing six, four meals and two shakes. So the post workout shake, if we get something in here and then we just go back and get our powder, powder and add to it, correct? Yep. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, for me it's just gonna figure out these shakes and what I what I like. Because they're like at least with the food, I've eaten food at food. <laughs> I know those. But the shakes are something completely new to me, so that'll be yeah. I think I'm just figuring that out. Yeah, it's and remember it's just a like we're we're here to to accomplish a goal. Like we're not here to have the most delicious shake on the planet. Like we don't we didn't buy the supplements that are the tastiest ever because typically there's uh, something that we're giving up to get a really tasty supplement. Typically there's a downside. Sure. Yeah, and so like while the stuff that we have is totally palatable, it'll work. Like if you're like, but this one's so much better. <laughs> Ask the question why? Yeah. Why is it so much better? That's good. I have a question. So. If for whatever reason, like sometimes I've had, like I ran out of a fat or something for my breakfast, like my avocados went bad, would it be better to just skip that fat for my, for my breakfast meal or add it into a later meal? So your question was, if you have a situation where you don't have a component of your meal to eat right. and there's no option to eat that there, like should, you, bad or right, should you add that to another meal? Um, yes, okay. yes, if you can. Um, now, don't get excited and start thinking about, well, I'm going to save all my carbs to the very end of the day, and I'm going to have ice cream. No. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't, I, yes, that's not quite as good as getting it at your meal, but it's better than not having it. You do kind of want to keep that energy balance, right? That caloric surplus or deficit, and you want to keep that right where you want it. That's a good question. Any other questions like that? Are we going to get more into depth about like what composes like macros, as far as like you mentioned berries being a carb and all that kind of stuff? Because I've heard people talk about in general macros, and it's still a mystery to me. Like I know it's pretty like the meal prep I can follow. It's great. I like it but I'm just curious just for knowing more in depth. Um. So macro, when people say macronutrients, they're talking about three things, um, proteins, carbohydrates, and fat. Mm -hmm. And those are macronutrients. When people talk about like, you know, like, oh, you tracking macros, bro? It's kind of like, are you tracking the amount of these foods that's going in your body and what times they are? Mm -hmm. Is kind of what they mean. Yeah. But like still in my head, like I've got the five pyramids. It's like being rained in me from like elementary school. So like rethinking about what a fruit is is like it's hard for me to just say oh fruits are carbs. Like that's not that's not accurate. If it's the right. Yeah. Well, it kind of depends on like what lens we're looking through. As far as like an energy content, yeah, fruits are carbs. Because like the the macronutrients are representative representative of the energy content of foods. And so there's, um, you know, carbohydrates have four grams or four, four um, calories per gram of carbohydrate. Uh, proteins have four calories per gram of protein. And then fats have nine calories per gram of fat. So they're very, very energy dense, more than twice as energy dense as proteins and carbs. And so that's what they're talking about is where is the energy coming from? Now, is there, is there so you eat chicken. Is there more than just protein in chicken? Yeah, there's like cellular structure, there's water, there, there might be saline, there, there's, there's stuff. There's other stuff in there, but there's nothing else that contains energy content as far as our bodies are concerned. Okay. All right. And so macros is understanding, in a layman's term, it's understanding where the energy is coming from in our food and what energy we need to be most effective. Yeah, well put. It's where the energy is coming from in our food. And so like you've got an apple, 
And so an apple doesn't have any significant protein or fat content. Its, car its energy content comes pr uh, primarily and almost entirely from the carbohydrates in it. Uh, from the from the sugars and the, and the complex carbohydrates that are, that are in it. There's other stuff there. There's like uh, cellulose and a bunch of other things. There's fiber and there's a lot of things in the apple. The apple is not in its essence a carbohydrate. There's many other things there. But you're right in saying that the energy from that apple uh, comes from the macronutrient of carbohydrates. Okay. Can we eat fruits or not yet? Marie said not yet two weeks ago. Yeah, but you weren't here a week ago. I, I, I was, I listened to it last night. Yeah, so, so what did I say? I did stop at 10 minutes early. It was my clock, I had to go to bed. All right. But did you, did you talk about it? So yeah, okay. so, um, so fruits. So do they fit our categories? Okay. I mean, so, don't apples have carbs? Could you, could you eat an apple for, for the So when do you want to eat an apple? Uh, probably the morning, maybe. Okay. Now, is an apple, is that, so for our carbohydrates, if you tap the carb title on your meal plan, what does it say? Okay. white rice, brown rice, white rice, Okay. Potatoes. Okay. Quinoa, quinoa. You'll get it eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. If it fits your macros, probably. Gotcha. Probably. Now, I still wouldn't do fruit for every carbohydrate at every meal. It's a bad idea. We're not going to get the right response there. We're sticking primarily to our initial carbohydrates: the the starchy carbs, the the rices, the potatoes, uh, the oats. Can we do some fruit? Yeah, you can do some fruit. You might you might double check is the fruit I'm eating consistent with my macro content, content that I'm supposed to be getting. Because yeah. fruits can vary widely. Pineapple is very, very different than blueberries. Yeah. So just double check that. But yeah, you're okay. Like apples or bananas would be okay. Now bananas is, is a really, uh, typically a very high glycemic index carbohydrate. So that would be a great one for your trashy carbs post-workout. Post yeah, typically bananas are about 20 grams of carbs. 20, 25 grams. So that could be a good one post-workout. Chris, you've been awfully quiet over here. He's getting ready to crush it. I'll try. Do, do or do not, there is no try. Okay, then you have a bit, I love it. So like for our post-workout shake, would it not be ideal to do like, drink your shake with just the powder and then have a banana? Do you want to That's great. Okay. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's good. And then, okay, will we be able to keep these Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so you get these for the duration of the program as part of the, the seminar cost, and then you can keep these for the duration of your entire lives. Uh, they're 19 bucks a month to keep your template. And I will say we have some, some awesome new functionality and a new redesign coming out that's really cool. And, and I guess as we in the next four weeks, as our weight adjusts and everything else, do they automatically adjust as well? No. They don't automatically adjust, and there's a reason for that, is we don't want to hit a moving target. Okay. So these are set at a set point for you, and so as your body weight changes, we don't want to move that target on you. And so what we're going to talk about next week is how do we change templates and why? Or if I rephrase that question, what do I do when I stop losing weight despite the fact that I'm eating on my meal plan? Or I'm eating perfectly to my meal plan, I lost one pound, and now nothing is happening. What do we do? Because that can happen. And if that does happen, there's things that we can adjust for. And the, the reasoning behind that is we want to keep your body weight and all your biometrics that set the meal plan up. We all want to keep that the same. And then we will adjust in specific increments up or down based on what we see with your body weight. And this is why it's absolutely critical to track your body weight. Anson's going right to target afterwards. Awesome, guys. So yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, you will be able to keep the same template. You will be able to keep all the data that's in the template, and uh, you'll be able to carry it forward. Okay. And so, uh, I think one of our one of our uh, first meal plan clients has been using it for five months, four months, five months. Kia, I, I think it's 
think it's about five, maybe, maybe even six months, and she's lost 22 pounds. She's 5'3", and she went, yeah, and she went from 150-something pounds to 130 pounds and is still dropping weight. And so she, uh, she was a good CrossFit athlete to start with, and she was like, well, but I'll never be good at gymnastics. I just love barbell stuff. And now she just realized, and she took a 20-pound weight vest off, and she's like, oh, my God, I'm good at everything. <laughs> so, um, so yes, you will, our goal is to be able to give you the keys to the castle. We want to give you the reins so you can drive your own body to do whatever you want it to do. Does that mean you're always going to be on a hard diet? No. No, and that's okay. But we want you to have the power to do what you want to do with your body. It's not rocket science, but it is science. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? So I just want to recap with the shakes. Of course. We get the, the post-workout is the whey protein. Yep. Plus some kind of carb, which is where you mentioned the Gatorade. Yeah, Gatorade powder, bananas are great there as well. Yeah, yeah, gluten-free cereal is cool, you know. In your shape, or do you eat gluten-free You can eat it, yeah. That's what I was mm -hmm. It was separate. <laughs> it doesn't have to go in the shake, yeah. <laughs> it just has to go, it doesn't have to go in the shake, it has to go in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. And then the bedtime is casing protein powder with a fat and a carb, which, for example... The, the bedtime does not have to be a shake. It's an option. Yeah, it does not have to be a shake. Yeah. In fact, many people will opt for just having a little, another small meal before bed, and that's great. Okay. Yeah, it's an option. Some people really like having a little, little protein shake before bed. It's a nice little treat. Yeah. If I can find a chocolate protein powder, I don't know if that exists, for the casing powder. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have it. We'll have it here next week. Perfect. Which one's better? Yeah. You can make a good argument for both. Like, it, it's, you know, it's just if you can't have casein protein powder because it messes with your stomach, I don't want you to force it. Remember you're saying if you eat a meal, it's like a, it's like a log fire or, or you know, you pro protein shakes like... A whey gas. protein shake is like throw, throwing gasoline on the fire. Whey protein is like throwing gasoline on the fire. Casein protein is a slower digesting protein, okay. yeah. Um, so the problem with a lot of fruits is they're a high fructose content, and so that's why I don't have a lot of examples. Bananas uh, are typically a higher glucose con content, and the difference between glucose and fructose has to do with uh, how it's digested by your body. Fructose has to be processed by your liver, which necessarily slows down the digestion rate for that stuff, and so while we want a very uh, like a high glycemic index, trashy carb to get in very quickly, spike our, our insulin levels, which is a growth hormone, and we want to start the rebuilding process. Fructose has to go through your liver, and that just slows the process way down. Plus, if we have a ton of fructose, which I don't think any of you are going to have a problem with, if we have a ton of fructose, that can really stress your liver out. And so uh, as far as fruits go, you just want to make sure you get a glucose-heavy fruit. There aren't many of them because uh, fruits are typically high in fructose. And so that, that's why we have like kind of the banana options, the, the powdered Gatorade, the, uh, the gluten-free cereal, stuff like that. Which fruits should we avoid at all costs? You mentioned pineapple. Fruits that you should avoid at all costs. Yeah. Hey, Anton, you're a grown man. You don't, you don't have to avoid fruits at all costs. Uh, just know, know what you're eating. Know what you're eating and why. Um, so, so, you know, there's nothing that you have to avoid at all costs. Um, I would say things that shouldn't, I mean, you shouldn't have a large volume of fruit in your diet. You should have some fruit. Okay. Yeah, occasionally. Occasionally. Yeah, great. Grapes are great. Make sure they, make sure they fit your, uh, your carbohydrate content, and occasionally. They're fantastic. What else, guys? You guys ready to roll? How do you feel about couscous? Couscous. Uh, I talked about quinoa last week. Now my question is. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm no expert on couscous. Is it? Yeah, if it's made from wheat, we probably got to avoid it.
Yeah, sorry, I'm no expert on couscous. I would look up whether or not. I'm looking for lots of alternative options this week too. Yeah, I would. I would look up. Yeah, I go back to make your food as boring as possible. You will stick to the plan if your food is boring. Seriously. I disagree. <laughs> I love good food. And those, these potatoes and veggies, they can, they can be delicious. Okay. Like, like you give enough variety that if you just make, I feel like, a different vegetable, a different meat, and a different carb for one of your four, like, I think you, you'll have enough variety that it'll be good. Sarah, I think you're probably more advanced <laughs> than most of us. Yeah, I think you're probably doing a great job is what that's a sign of. I just got to do the right template. Yeah. Well, today's the day. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. We, be great. Cool. Awesome, guys. Any other questions? Fantastic. Guys, go forth. Follow the meal template. Looking forward to next week. We'll talk about how to, uh, how to do more powerful stuff next week.